All righty. Yeah, we got a full house this morning. Good, thank you. I know it's full. Though. So if anybody comes in, um, Greg, we've got we've got five seats up here. Greg, there's five right here. If anybody else comes in, large group comes in. There's three right over there. Okay. So yeah, if you see somebody come in, make room. We got a full house. So thank you for being here this morning. Uh, I told you uh, over the years that I, I used to work at I used to work at a bank and I remember back in the day when uh, I had started there the uh, uh, the HR representative came up to me one time and asked me if I would like to uh, sign up for the company's 401k and I taught them I said no I, I there's no way I could ever run that far and so um, you can't just shake your head okay All right, here we go. Lottie Moon. We are doing our Lottie Moon offering, Christmas offering, and we've kicked that off last week. And you should, hopefully, some of you, several of you got the Lottie Moon pie. And so that's just a reminder to let you know that we're going to be taking Lottie Moon offering the whole month. And um, we got a goal of $12,000. We'll have more information coming as we, we go further into the month about the giving. But it's just right on your envelope or your check, you know, Lottie Moon, 100% of the money given to Lottie Moon, Moon goes overseas to uh, international missions, okay? And then the next thing we have is our all-church program, our music program, acting thing. It is happening again tonight at 6 p.m. And if you missed it, if you did not make it last night, you need to be here tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you now, uh, you really, uh, really need to make an uh, effort to be here, all right? So for those of you who were here last night, you kind of, you know, you'll get that. So, uh, yes, yeah, so you want to be here. It's a good time, lots of laughs, and the music is outstanding. Some of the best you'll hear, I promise you. You, you don't want to miss this. Bring your friends, family. Uh, it's, a, it's a great night. We also have our all-church Christmas dinner uh, next Sunday night. All right, there's information in the bulletin about that, so check that out. We're going we're gonna to we'll have food in here. We'll have uh, seating in here out there in the foyer also. Um, there'll be some fun things going on. There's this thing called the uh, 12 Days of Christmas, and if you have not seen that yet, it will be something that you won't forget. All right, so yeah, those who have seen it, you know what I mean. Um, it's, it's a good time also. Staff puts that on. Uh, but as far as we're going to provide all the meats for the dinner, we're asking you guys if you'll bring some sides and some desserts. And we're asking you also if you'll sign up and let us know kind of what you're bringing. And so when you head out of this door right there at the table over there, there is a place for you to sign up to bring some stuff. And if you don't sign up, still bring food because we're still going to eat. All right? So that will happen. We're Baptist. Um, and then our Christmas food baskets... Uh, you'd be amazed uh, at how many, uh, how many people we food, feed, uh, the items that we give away as a church. And so if you want to donate towards that, just write on your check or your envelope again, food basket, something like that. And that way we get to cover, uh, cover the cost of that. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. It's a great morning. And uh, we're getting ready to pray. And we'll, we'll begin worship, man. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great day. Father God, holy God, we, we come here. And God, I just want to let you know, God, I, we adore you. I adore you, God. I'm so thankful for all you've done in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the, uh, the love that you've shown on the cross, uh, the death of Christ to, to pay for my sin. God, I can't begin to, to thank you enough, to worship you enough for that. Uh, God, let us just now just, just breathe you in and just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We're here to worship you and to lift up the name of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Y'all want to sing some Christmas songs? Let's stand.
shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus.
Good morning. During this time of year, being away from your family is, is just awful. Sometimes it's awful when you're with your family. But uh, that's a whole nother deal. But being away like our military are has to be just terrible. So I encourage you to pick someone on this, or all of them, and pray for them during the week, especially this time of year. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we, we pause at this time to give thanks. We thank you so much for all you do in this, this time of year, the season, your son. Lord, we can never thank you enough. We cannot adore you enough. We cannot do anything to earn what you give us. Lord, we ask that you be with each and every person on this list, those that are not, and with their families. Lord, may you protect them, may you guide them, and may they feel your presence. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. first ones to see God in the flesh. I just, wonder, I just wonder what went through their minds. They'd just seen an angel, and now they're, they're seeing what the angel told them about. And so all this has become reality then. They'd never seen anything like this, and now all of a sudden the, the Messiah, the promised one, is presented to them as a baby. I just wonder how much worship went on there. 
How many were scratching their head going, I don't understand. We have the privilege of totally understanding. And yet sometimes we come to the manger. We come to that place. And we fail to really worship the God who loved us so much. He sent his one and only son for us. Do you love Jesus today? If you don't understand any of these lyrics, and, and if they're just Christmas songs, know that there is, a, there is a God who loves you with a love beyond compare. And he sent the very best of heaven. For us, Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you! You are the one our hearts adore. Jesus, we. so sorry that we sing songs just because they're songs. And we don't think about the fact, God, that in a distant place that we've maybe never been and don't even understand what it looked like, you allowed your son to be born in the feeding trough of animals. Sometimes, it's, God, it's hard for me to understand that love. But God, in this day, help us to soak up the events of that time, the thoughts that might have gone through their minds. And then, God, at the end of the day, when we sit at home or we lay our head on our, in, in, into our beds, God, reflect to know that you are an awesome God who sent your son in human form to help us understand who you are. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the perfect Christmas gift. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.
Good morning. If you take your Bibles, turn to Luke, Luke chapter 1. I want to begin with verse 26. The passages we're going to look at today are very familiar. You, you know these. Think, well, why are we going over them again then? Well, because it's Christmas. We need to be reminded of this story. But don't let the familiarity of the story close your mind to what God may want to say to you today. God is a creative God. Sometimes he takes things that are very familiar and he teaches us new things. Would you pray with me before we start? Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love for us, God. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. And Lord, I have no idea why you chose to do it the way that you did, but we thank you for it. Speak to us right now, Lord. Many of us here are excited. We're excited about Christmas. We're excited about life. Father, but some of us are struggling. We're having a hard time. So Father, in your incredible way, would you speak to each of us, each person at their need. And Father, help us to hear what you have for us today. Through your precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 1, beginning verse 26. Story about Mary, when Mary found out that she was going to have the baby Jesus. She was living her life, things were going along fine, and then unexpectedly her life got interrupted. You ever had that happen in your life? Look at verse 26. In the sixth month... When you read the Bible and you come across something like in the sixth month, sixth month of what? Well, it's her relative Elizabeth has been pregnant for six months. So how do you know? Well, we'll see that. We read that in chapter one earlier, and then also we're going to see that later in this chapter. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. Now, Nazareth was a small town. It's about 75 to 100 miles north of Jerusalem, small town, about 400 people. Do you know any towns of about 400 people? One thing you know about a town of 400 people is everybody knows everybody's business, right? Now that's going to come into play here. A town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Mary's life is going to be very unexpectedly interrupted here. She's going to get a surprise. She's going to be surprised here. Look at verse 28. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Where do you think Mary was when the angel appeared to her? Was she at home? Was she by herself? Was she with her friends? Where do you think she was? Well, it doesn't tell us. Have you ever had an angel speak to you that you know of? Some of you nodding your head. Some of you pointing to the person you're sitting next to you. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. If an angel appeared to you, you would too. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. She's, she's surprised. She's unexpectedly interrupted in her life. She's surprised at what? And, and then she's going to hear some very unusual words. That you're going to be with child and give birth to a son. And then even gave him, told her what to name him. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Man, that's a lot to take in. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of of God. Is it important that we believe that Mary was a virgin when she conceived Jesus Christ? 
Is that an important, is that an important biblical truth? It is. Why? Well, it, it, it speaks of the deity of Jesus, but also, even more so, it, it's what the Bible said. And if the Bible is wrong there, where else would the Bible be wrong? Incredibly important people, incredibly intelligent people have tried for years to prove the Bible wrong. They've never been able to. Everything that the Bible says is, is true, whether we understand it or not. And if God really wanted to make sure that we understood his word, would he talk about a virgin having a baby? That, that's kind of stretching us, isn't it? And the angel gives Mary an unusual word. says, you're going to have a child. And by the way, it won't be through a man. It'll be through the Holy Spirit of God. Well, if you were Mary, what would you be thinking right now? Help? God, when he gives us a job, he always gives encouragement. Look at verse 36. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. So God interrupted Mary's life, gave her an incre surprised her, and then gave her an incredible message about what's going to happen to her. But he didn't leave her hanging. He said, your relative Elizabeth, you know, the one that's too old to have children, she's six months pregnant right now. And as soon as this event ends, this encounter with the angel, Mary goes to be with Elizabeth. But it's decision time. How's Mary going to handle this? How do you handle it when God tells you to do something? When you're standing at the line at the store and somebody says, see that person in front of you? Tell them about me. Um, the one that's six foot nine. Um, or he says, go over here and help this person over here. But I don't know them and they don't know me. Mary's going to have a decision how to handle this situation. Just like we have to make decisions when God impresses upon us what we're to do. Verse 38, Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Wow. That's quite a load for Mary to take on. And for her to say, okay, let it be just as you have said. I am the Lord's servant. Why do you think she could respond that way? Because in her life prior to that, she followed God. She read scripture. She prayed. She had a relationship with God. So she was already moving that direction. Folks, God loves you. He knows you completely and he's got something for you to do. And when he speaks to you, it's going to be a whole lot easier for you to hear him if you have a relationship with him. Remember years ago when I was in college and this was a long time ago. This was so long ago that it's before cell phones and everything. And uh, what we would, we would do is when I would leave home and get to college, I would call back, uh, call collect. And then they would know that I, I made it. So one day I, I, I called um, and I said, hi, mom. She said, hello. And so I, I talked to her a little bit. And she said something. I talked to her a little bit. And I got this real uneasy feeling. Um, thinking something's not right here. I don't think it's my mom. Sure enough, it wasn't. I said to this lady on the phone, I said, um, you're not really my mother, are you? She goes, and you're not my son. I said, how do you know? And she says, I don't have a son. <laughs> anyway, we had a great conversation after that. Um, but... What clued me into it wasn't my mother. It didn't sound like her voice. Folks, it's going to be hard to hear God's voice if we never spend any time with him. Mary spent time with him. It made it possible for her to say, I'm God's servant. May it be to me, as he has said. But don't miss that last sentence. Then the angel left her. This angel came, gave her an incredible message. 
I mean, when an angel is talking to you, we really don't have any problem believing what they say because here's an angel of God. There'd be no mistaking that for a person. But then when the angel leaves and a day goes by and another day goes by and a week goes by and months go by, did that really happen? Sometimes we begin to question, did these things really happen? That's why Mary's decision is so important that she stays faithful to God. So here's Mary. What do we know about her? She's a young girl, probably somewhere between the age of 13 and 16. She's living with her parents. She's engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. And in those days, engagement is nothing like our engagement today. In those days when, when a man and a woman were going to be engaged, usually the parents set it up. And then what would happen was the parents of the man, the parents of the girl would, would come together and they would agree on a price. <laughs> Called it a dowry. And a price would be paid fr from the man to the girl's parents. And there would be an agreement written up. And then there would be a time of betrothal. And that time of betrothal, that engagement time, the, the two would not be together. They would, may talk or something. But she would continue to live at, in her home with her parents. He would continue to live in his home with his parents. And he would be working, preparing a home for his future wife. And at a later date, they would have a wedding ceremony that lasted seven days. Jessica, would a seven-day wedding ceremony be fun? No. So things have kind of turned upside down for Mary here. What is she going to say to Joseph? Who could possibly understand her? So she heads to see Elizabeth, a relative, who's six months pregnant, who was too old to have a child. If anybody could understand, Elizabeth could. Now if you turn over to Matthew. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. We're hearing from Mary's point of view. Now we're going to hear from Joseph's point of view. Matthew chapter 1, beginning 18. Jump up from that verse right there. Jump up to verse 16. It's the genealogy. Joseph's genealogy. And notice in verse 16 it says, And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. What do you notice about that? As you read that, what do you notice? Jacob, the father of Joseph, Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Did he call Joseph the father of Jesus? He didn't. Why? Because Joseph wasn't the father of Jesus. Yes, he's the one who took care of Jesus and raised him and took care of Mary, Mary, Mary. But, but he was not the father of Jesus. And the Bible makes that really clear. Okay, down to verse 18. Joseph. Joseph is a young carpenter. He's engaged to Mary. He's uh, probably undoubtedly looking forward to his wedding day. And he's preparing a home for her to come to. And he's working hard. Verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Before they came together sexually, she was found to be with child. How do you suppose that happened? When did he find out? Well, it, did Mary go talk to him as soon as the angel came? Did she go see him immediately when she got back from seeing her three months later? She got back from seeing Elizabeth? Was it longer? Did they have a conversation or did Joseph just notice one day, hmm, she's gaining weight? How did he find this out? The Bible doesn't tell us. Someday in heaven we have a lot of time. I want to catch Joseph and Mary and ask them that. Did you all talk about this? By the way, how did that conversation go? I can't imagine it going very well, can you? Can you? 
Because Joseph knows one thing. Mary is pregnant and it is not him. So what's the answer? What's the alternative? Hmm. Something very unexpected interrupted Joseph's life. He did not expect that to happen. He was very surprised. Look at verse 19. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. This tells us that Joseph was a righteous man. Again, like Mary, he, spent, he had a relationship with God. He could hear God. Why? Because he spent time with him. He had a relationship with God. And Joseph didn't want to hurt Mary. Was he hurt? Undoubtedly. But he didn't want to hurt her. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. This engagement, betrothal time, was a, the only way it could be broken up was a divorce. And what Joseph could do, remember this is a small town, about 400 people. Everybody knows everybody's business. And when Joseph finds out, and I'm sure other people recognize, and, and Mary's pregnant, and they're not married yet. Wow. And people talk. And there's looks. And there's comments. I wonder if the mothers in town let their daughters play with Mary anymore. I wonder if Joseph the carpenter lost some bids, some jobs because of this. Joseph could have avoided all that. He could have gone to the leaders in town and said, hey, this is not on me. I'm innocent. And then Mary would have taken the brunt of it and could possibly even have been stoned to death. But Joseph thought it over, weighed his options and said to him, I'm going... I'm going to just divorce her quietly. I don't want her to be hurt any more than she is. And I'm just going to divorce her quietly and we'll go our separate ways. As well as you can in a town of 400. Verse 20. Joseph is about to get a surprise visit. So he goes to bed that night. Planning on getting up the next morning and divorcing Mary quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Wow, a surprise visit from an angel. Telling him Mary was not unfaithful. Mary had done nothing wrong even gave Joseph the, how, the name to name the baby. It's unusual, isn't it? But then Joseph needed encouragement as well. Just as Mary had encouragement from Elizabeth, Joseph needed encouragement. Joseph had a relationship with God. It tells us he's a righteous man, which means he would have read the scripture and in verse 22, he would have known Isaiah 7, 14. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Can you imagine the encouragement that had to be? Joseph said, it's in scripture. It's in scripture right here. Today, as we look at the events in our world, we are watching prophecy unfold, aren't we? We're watching scripture happen in front of our eyes as we see what's happening overseas. Joseph had to be looking and saying, I'm seeing prophecy being unfold right here in my own life. Man, that, that had to be eye-opening. And then verse 24, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. Can you imagine going, Joseph going to Mary and saying, Mary, you're right, I know, it's true. It's true. And his name is to be Jesus. And I wonder what Mary did when she heard that. He went and took her to his house. Ah, the scandal in town continued to grow. The only problem was 
They were the only two who knew that there was no scandal. Verse 25, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Mary, godly young lady, living her life, enjoying life, playing with her friends, about to get married. Joseph, setting up a home, about to get married, looking forward to life, and their life is turned upside down. Would you like to have been Mary? This was directed to the ladies. Not... Guys, would you want to be Joseph? That would have been tough, wouldn't it? Well, I want to tell you, God has something for you. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, he tells us that he has something for us. It says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. What is that saying? It says that God knows you. He knows right where you are. He's created you the way he wants you. And he's prepared things for you to do. Things to make a difference in the lives of other people. Things to bring glory and honor to him. The only problem is, are we going to be willing to do that? Because see, there's going to come a time when very unexpectedly, we're going to hear from God. Through an angel. I've never experienced an angel that I know of. But we're going to hear from God. And then we have a decision to make. And it's going to be a surprise because we're, we're going on with our life and all of a sudden something interrupts our life here and, okay, what are we going to do now? And it'll be something unusual. It'll be something unusual. God has put in you exactly what you need to be his vessel. There was a, a church in, a, in an area that was fell on hard times. They were about to close the doors because they didn't have enough money to keep things going. And in their chapel, they had a big artwork, a big piece of artwork, and it had been sitting on their wall for 40, 50, 60 years. Somebody came in, looked at that, and they said, do you know what you've got there? And he said, yeah, it's an old piece of artwork. He said, no, no. And he told him what it was. It was created in year 1493 by a famous artist. It was worth millions. Uh, they sold it. They had what they needed right there on the wall all that time, and they didn't know it. Folks, I want to tell you, inside you, God has exactly what you need for God to use you. Who put it there? God did. That's, why, that's how he knows it's there. And he wants to use you to bless other people in ways that you can never do on your own. And when you do that, you're going to feel such encouragement and such blessings. But there comes a decision time. There comes a time when you have to make a decision. Am I going to listen to God? Am I going to obey Him? There have been times we've all heard God speak. I think most of us have. And we've had to make a decision whether to obey Him or not. Those times when we didn't, we were like the little boy that wanted to go to the circus, ask his dad for a ticket, and his dad said, son, I don't have the money, you're going to have to earn it. So he worked hard, and he got money for the ticket. Circus was coming to town. It started with the parade. He finally was able. He paid for a ticket. He got it. He had it in his hand, and he's, he's watching the parade as all the animals and the circus people go by, and then the clowns come by, and a clown comes over by him, and and he puts that ticket in the clown's hand, and, and he's just all excited. He's had so much fun. He goes home, says, Dad, he tells him about the parade and, and, he's, and how great that was. And Dad says, come here, son. Put him on his lap and says, son, you didn't see the circus. All you saw was parade. The circus is yet to happen. Folks, God has put in us exactly what we need to be his servant. And some of us may just be watching the parade. We're missing the circus. We're missing what God really wants to do. Don't miss that. 
Don't miss that. So how do we know what he wants us to do? Well, he gave us the Bible. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us. That is if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus, you have the Bible. But you need to ask God to help you understand it. Because you don't have the Holy Spirit. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. In between services, there was a little girl. She was about four or five. And she asked me this question. I didn't give her a very good answer. She said, how does God take us to heaven? How would you answer that? I told her by an airplane. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. But she said, how does God take us to heaven? You have a good answer for that. Come and tell me. I'm explaining this to a four or five year old, okay? Children ask the toughest questions. But what does that tell you about that child? The Holy Spirit is speaking to her. She's asking questions because the Holy Spirit is speaking to her. Let me ask you, are you asking questions about God? Are you asking spiritual questions? God loves you. He's created you to do what only you can do through him. And when he's ready for you to do it, he'll let you know and he will send encouragement to you. There was a 13-year-old boy who was very ill. Doctors told him he wouldn't make it to Christmas. Many of you have heard this poem before. His parents, his family was having a really hard time thinking of Christmas without him. But God gave him a gift. Gave him a gift of a poem. He wrote this down and after he died, his parents found the poem. My first Christmas in heaven. I see the countless Christmas trees around the world below with tiny lights like heaven stars reflecting on the snow. The sight is so spectacular, please wipe away that tear for I am spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. I hear the many Christmas songs that people hold so dear, but the sounds of music can't compare with the Christmas choir up here. I have no words to tell you the joy their voices bring, for it is beyond description to hear the angels sing. I know how much you miss me. I see the pain inside your heart. Even though I am so far away, we really aren't apart. So be happy for me, loved ones. You know I hold you dear. Be glad I'm spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. I send you each a special gift from my heavenly home above. I send you each a memory of my undying love. After all, love is the gift more precious than gold. It was always most important in the stories Jesus told. Please love and keep each other as my father said to do. For I can't count the blessings or the love he has for you. So have a Merry Christmas and wipe away that tear. Remember, I'm spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. God loves you and he's put in you exactly what you need to be a blessing to somebody else. It might be a poem. It might be a smile. It might be a friendship. It, I don't know what it is. But just as he spoke to Mary, just as he spoke to Joseph, he'll speak to you. If it's an angel, please come and tell me about it. I would love to hear that. But he will find a way to speak to you. And then, folks, it's our decision. We can obey him and do what he says. Or we can just go on our merry way. See the parade, but miss the circus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love for us. 
Thank you for your blessings. Thank you that you know us completely. And God, I thank you that you didn't just place us here and leave us alone. But you have a plan for our lives. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray for that person who's enjoying life, looking forward to Christmas. Lord, increase their joy. Father, I pray for that one who's having a hard time right now. Life is a struggle. They're wondering sometimes where you are. Father, just as you appeared to Mary and to Joseph, would you in your incredible way appear to them? Let them know that you are with them and that your grace is sufficient for them. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray.